Christ, having risen from the dead, dies now no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us continue celebrating our new life, our risen life with Christ, acknowledging our sin to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I ask Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have been renewed by Paschal remedies, transcending the likeness of our earthly parentage, may be transformed in the image of our heavenly Maker, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported what the chief priests and the elders had told them. And when they heard it, they raised their voices to God with one accord and said, Sovereign Lord, maker of heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, you said by the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of your father David, your servant. Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples entertain folly? The kings of the earth took their stand and the princes gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. Indeed, they gathered in this city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. Herod and Pontius Pilate, together with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do what your hand and your will had long ago planned to take place. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with all boldness as you stretch forth your hand to heal and signs and wonders are done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. As they prayed, the place where they were gathered shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Why do the nations rage and the peoples utter folly? The kings of the earth rise up and the princes conspire together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their fetters and cast their bonds from us. Alleluia. He who is throned in heaven laughs. The Lord derides them. Then in anger he speaks to them. He terrifies them with his wrath. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord said to me, you are my son. 
This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. Alleluia. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, he came to Jesus that night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man once grown old be born again? Surely he cannot re-enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills. And you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This Easter season that we are in is a time when we renew our baptismal promises. And traditionally, it's the time when new members enter into the church through baptism at the Easter vigil. Unfortunately for our elect, they're still waiting until the pandemic passes and we can safely gather and ha have them join Christ in his death and burial so that they might rise with him to newness of life through the waters of baptism. It is in these waters that we enter into a new life. And it is the very life of the Trinity, of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're baptized in that most holy name. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And through that saving action, we enter into the life, the communion, the community of Father, Son, and Spirit, their love, their joy, their peace, we are part of that through our baptism. And that is what we need to remember. We are already part of that divine life. We are with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit 
and they also dwell within us. Again, we need to remember that. Uh, uh, reading in the paper and seeing in the news, levels of frustration and anger are rising. It, it's, it's to be expected, as we're being told by therapists, that when people are uncertain and there's fear, then uh, these kinds of things mount within them. But isn't that precisely what we were supposed to be dealing with during Lent? Wasn't it after Jesus' baptism that he was driven to the desert by the Holy Spirit to be put to the test? And it was there, after he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and was hungry, then is when the tempter comes to say, well, if you're the son of God, command these stones to turn into bread. Satisfy your hunger. And the other temptations as well. And Jesus rejects them. He knows who he is, that he is the son of the father. That was revealed to him at his baptism. You are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. And he does what Jesus does, what he hears the father telling him through the scriptures, through the law, through the prophets, through Moses, the prophets, and through the Psalms. Jesus responds to the devil's temptations and rejects them flatly and does the will of the Father. That's what our Lent was supposed to be about so that we could come to this Easter season with heart and mind and spirit renewed so that we could display to all the world this new life that we have. Well, of course, we're also subject to sin. And we grow impatient and we grow weary and we grumble and complain just like the Israelites did in the desert against Moses. Why did you bring us out here just to die of thirst, just to die of hunger? We could have done that in Egypt and still had our fill of food and, and had water to drink. The first reading today had a powerful line for me. And it was, And now, Lord, take note of their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with all boldness as you stretch forth your hand to heal. We need to do what these first disciples did, even when they were being arrested and questioned and interrogated and the pressure being put on them to stop, stop preaching in this name of Jesus and stop trying to put the blame on us for having him crucified. We need to ask the Lord to heal our hearts and our minds and our spirits Stretch forth your hand to heal so that we're restored to calm and peace and we know who we are, God's beloved sons and daughters, and that we act like God's beloved sons and daughters. And rather than grumble and complain, we, like Jesus, when put to the test, respond like Jesus with the word of God. Not by bread alone does man live, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And the Lord is God, and him alone shall you adore. We need to ask for healing, not just for ourselves personally, but healing for 
our families, for our communities, for our nations, and healing for the whole world. In this time of the pandemic, there is a lot of anger that is surfacing. And, and the frustration and the fear. Again, this is all the stuff that we were supposed to be dealing with during Lent. Uh, it seems like maybe Lent just prolonged for us this year and giving us even another opportunity to respond with the grace of our baptism to respond as God's beloved sons and daughters. Again, the words which Jesus expressed to his disciples, we heard in the gospel yesterday, peace be with you. May the peace of God be in our hearts and in our souls and keep us in that peace as we go through this pandemic. Now let us offer our prayers, our intentions to our Heavenly Father. We pray for the church and for her mission to be evangelizing and proclaiming the good news and announcing it even in time of difficulty and persecution and to offer hope and promise to all of God's people that God is with us and God's power will save us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have the responsibility of making the decisions, whether in government or business, in health, education, industry, whatever the leadership may be that they be guided by the Holy Spirit to make decisions that are truly wise and prudent, that protect human life and also promote the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the elect who are still waiting waiting uh, to enter into the waters of baptism that the Lord may strengthen their faith and give them hope that this pandemic will pass quickly and that they will be able to be joined to Christ and joined with us at this Eucharistic table we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer and for families that are experiencing difficulties because of the pandemic uh, because either they don't have the skills or they, they, they're lacking in, in that ability to trust in God or to be able to cope with this difficulty in a way that is healthy. May the hand of God reach to them and heal them of the fear calm their anxiety, give and restore peace to their households. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And indeed, may the hand of God stretch forth and heal those who have been touched by the coronavirus and who are fighting for their lives in hospitals around the world. May God restore them to health give them the strength that they need to fight this this illness we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer and for the repose of the deceased deacon jerry hippus who served here at saint joseph on the rio grande for many years may he rest in peace may the good works that he did in service of god and of the church may they accompany him them, accompany him into the kingdom we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer and for you the parishioners of saint joseph on the rio grande for your family your friends your relatives all whom you hold dear may god hear your prayers and grant your petitions we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer and in silence please add your own special needs
loving Father who raised Jesus from the dead and have raised us up to new life in company with him, where he is seated at your right hand, we have already entered there by faith. Help us on our earthly pilgrimage to be steadfast in the hope that we have in you, your power to save. Help us to seek the things that are above. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus stood in the midst of his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Alleluia.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi, Letare, Alleluia, Quia quem eruisti portare, Alleluia, Resurrexit, Sicut Dixit, Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.